Okay, so we're gonna install a Schluter niche in a corner of a shower. This is a really common area that you wanna install a niche, mainly because most of the time you have an outside exterior wall that you cannot put a niche in. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, an exterior wall requires some insulation to keep the expansion and contraction coming through. Plus, you don't want it to be cold or warm coming through that wall. You always want to have really a minimum of an R13 behind a niche. So a lot of times, an exterior wall is not a good location for a shower niche. We're going to be putting it in the corner, which would be the next best place. So what I usually like to do is just buy a preformed niche like this. This is a 12 or what is this? Uh, yeah, 12 by 28. But what I really like is having tile going directly all the way into the niche. So this two by four, we're gonna to have to cut out for the niche area. But one of the things I wanna make sure before you get started with figuring out where your niche is, is making sure that your tile layout is gonna work well with the height of the niche. So we're gonna be using 12 by 24 inch tile. And uh, basically we still have to put the pan in. We still got, here I'll show you. So we have the floor recessed. This is going to be a curbless shower. So we're going to have uh, probably by the time I'm done with tiling in the, the, uh, the actual pan, about an inch and a half off of this floor. So I'm just going to set this on here, make a mark. I want to take a look at here, this and see exactly where this lines up with the niche. So as you can see, I'm taking off approximately, what, four and a half inches. So that's going to work out fine. Now keep in mind, when you're installing tile on a niche, you can always overrun the niche and build up the surface from the top or the bottom. So you can make the niche smaller, you just can't make it bigger. It's harder to redo that and, and make the waterproofing work. So just actually cut off the one side of this so that this can go straight up against the wall. And we're gonna cut out the, the uh, the stud on that as well. So we'll just cut this. So by cutting this off, what this will do is when I install this, I'll just be butting the other half inch board straight up to the niche. So first thing is, is let's cut out our, our stud on here on the side. Okay, so the framing I made was about a quarter inch bigger than the actual niche itself to give some room for wiggle room. And I put up a two by four in flat ways so that I had some framing behind the niche. So always check your, so always check your joist before you install curdy board. You wanna make sure everything is in line with one another. So put a, a level on this and just make sure that there isn't anything more than a quarter inch of a gap. Because one thing about installing tile, it's much, much easier if everything is on one straight plane. Okay, so we put in some purdy board. Uh, pretty, pretty much the rolls are pretty much 12 inches all the way around. Uh, the framing has to be on 16 inch, inches on center, so make sure that that is done prior to it. And as you can see, we just cut out the area for the niche, retrace it, and allow that flange to slide right into it. So that framing behind it really helps out. So you just pinch both of these together. Now that we have framing behind that niche, Okay, same thing applies around the niche every 12 inches, but you're able to use the screws and pinch both of those boards together. Uh, that's where that framing behind it really helps out. As you can see, I have a little small piece that I put in at the ceiling. It was a little bit more than eight foot. Um, we're doing the back wall here every 12 inches for the, the screws and washers. This really does, is a really fast installation. So I highly recommend uh, using a foam board like Curdy board for your showers. Okay, so it's really important to measure your water before adding your thin set for any type of thin set you're using. In this instance, we're using Schluter's All Set, a modified thin set specifically for their product. And as you can see, it's a really thin consistency for the membrane installation. You want to use an eighth by eighth inch square notch trowel to uh, trowel the ridges before uh, spreading the thin set. And uh, what I like to use is just a regular mud pan with a six inch knife to apply it and then trowel it with the trial. 
So it uh, it just makes it a lot easier to, to spread it and get it on all of the seams. So you basically go over all the seams. As you can see, we went around the niche uh, with the membrane. Uh, the rule of thumb is basically two inches of overlap of anywhere you go with the uh, curdy band. Okay, so when it comes to the niche, let's just measure what the half of this. This is a 28 inch niche. So we want to put a shelf like right in the center. So let's get our laser to the center. So shelving is always somewhat difficult. Um, Schluter makes this, this comes with the actual kit. I don't really particularly like using this it's because it usually looks so commercial. So like, since I don't have any bull nose or edging on it, to do this, I would end up putting Rondek on the top and the bottom of this. And really, like the shelf is so thick. Uh, I don't really see any reason to have such a thick shelf. I mean, in some circumstances it looks great, but most of the time, I just think it looks bulky and commercial looking. So I don't usually use these. I usually toss these in the garbage. Um, and what I do is make my own. So sometimes you could buy a sill. So if you were doing a curb shower, I would use part of the curb as far as the, uh, as far as the shelf goes. You can order glass that usually has to be tempered. That takes a couple weeks to get in, or you can just simply buy a piece of pencil trim and finish the edges of the actual tile. So what we'll do is first get a piece of tile and allow this to extend over. So we got now. Oh. Okay, so this pencil trim is gonna go from corner to corner here. So I don't really want this, this tile or this bull nose sticking outside of the shelf. Um, so we wanna make sure, so our depth is three and three A's. So we'll measure out three and three A's. So that's where my pencil trim is gonna meet up at. So we really just need my tile pieces to be about two and three quarters of an inch. So, but we'll mark this right where our, our halfway mark is. And that, that'll basically be where our shelf lies. And then this pencil trim will cover that edge. So this is our mark. So we'll just notch out this section. So we're gonna notch it out with a four inch grinder. And please, please use your safety glasses and a respirator. I'm always in a rush and I should have grabbed my stuff before I did this. So don't follow my instruction when it comes to safety. Uh, I've been doing this for years and, and I should know better. Um, but uh, yeah, so you just wanna make sure that those shelving pieces fit in there, give it a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, so that you're able to pitch that actual sill. So a couple of tiling tips here is you always want to use directional troweling when installing tiles. So larger tile require a larger trowel size. I was using a quarter by three eighths inch square notch trowel for this one. Uh, you always want to back butter your tile. Uh, basically the concept is, is that the ridges will collapse when they're all in a row and then get a better coverage behind that tile. Most showers or all showers, you really want to have 95% coverage. So it's a good idea to pull off a tile if you ever need to to see what kind of coverage you're actually getting. I really like using uh, leveling systems for these larger tile. As you can see here, I'm using the wedge and clip system. This one specifically called uh, T-Lock Perfect Level Master. Great for tiles above niches like this. It kind of holds everything together. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it really helps out uh, getting everything nice and even. Okay, so we're about to finish this niche. Um, what we're gonna do is edge this with uh, Rondek. And I should mention that all of my tile that I cut around here is flush with the edge of the niche. So once I put that Rondek down, that'll, that'll come down a little bit further so then you can build up thin set and meet up with your tile against the edging. So um, it makes it a little pretty easy this way. Now, I just set this so I could still slide my Schluter Rondek into here. If you were gonna try to finish out for the day and you didn't have time to finish this, I would at least definitely get the Rondek in so that you can slide it in into the wet thin set. 
So I'm just going to simply measure my rond deck first. That's how I'm going to start the finishing of this. So, so I'm just measuring and going to dry fit these pieces. And sometimes taking your snips and just back cutting some of this will help you get it in place. So just back cutting some of this backing on here. Okay, so we're going to slide them in, uh, just dry fit them once more, and uh, really, I just honestly use my hands with the rubber gloves with the thin set and add more thin set behind that tile before placing them in. It's really important to make sure that you have plenty of thin set underneath there for that Schluter Ron deck to bond to, and if you're going to be finishing up, this would be a great place to stop for the day and uh, start tomorrow. Okay, so we got three and a half by 11 and a quarter. Let's get some so I'm gonna put some excess thin set on the back of here because I want it to pitch towards the front I'm gonna make sure my factory edge is on on the front towards the, the Ron deck okay then you want to just make sure that this is pitching towards the towards the shower in case any water gets in here and you want to make sure that this lip of the tile is even or proud of the the rond deck because you don't want water sitting up against the the rond deck so just make sure you put a level on here make sure it's tilted towards the shower okay so for mosaic tile i always use quarter by quarter inch square notch trial uh, again always using directional troweling uh, really doesn't really matter which direction with the, the mosaics uh, but you want to just make sure that you have a nice even coat uh, i also use a grout float to impact this i'm sorry i'm in the way but i do use a, gr a grout float to embed those mosaics i bring the mosaics up to the tile layer and also put the side up so that i can put my shelf in so this is going to yeah there you go put that in and then i have the um the top shelf that I slide into and then I run my mosaic continuing continuing up so it's really an easy process uh, it just takes some time to make sure that you don't have thin set coming in from uh, through those joints and then I've used a top sill and then I put the side up okay so we're gonna put this pencil trim on the front edge of this tile and uh, rather than using thin set I'm just gonna use some curdy fix and as I just think this is going to be a little bit stickier and a more solid installation on this section. So I'll put a little bit on the, the side as well. And then I just got a little piece of curdy to hold this side up until it is set. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite grouts that I like to use for showers, and that is uh, Spectralock 1. So this is a pre-mixed grout. You don't even have to do anything to it. You just open up the bucket and start using it. So there's no pre-mixing need to be done. Um, but one of the things that I really love about this is that I can always keep going back and using this. I could take my time. I could just do one section of the wall, take lunch, come back and then just continue to use the grout. So you're not mixing like a bag or doing an epoxy mix where if you mix it, you better use it or it's gonna uh, basically harden up and you won't be able to use it anymore. So that's one of the main reasons I like using the pre-mixed grouts is it's the flexibility of being able to continue to use it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do our niche. Again, wipe everything down, the damp sponge before you go grouting it. And I have a little bit of a smaller grout float that I can actually get in here. And then what's another nice thing is this, these little margin trowels that are, are floats as well. So this makes it nice to get in the corners and things. Okay, so grouting is essentially just packing all those joints, making sure that everything's full. Um, niches are a little bit, a little bit painful. I'm letting this one actually run on a little bit just to show you how much effort is in, in actually removing and, and installing this grout. Uh, now this specific mosaic has some stone in it it would have helped out tremendously if i would have sealed it 
the night before installing it. Uh, that would help that grout from sticking to the actual stone pieces. Glass is always usually typically pretty easy to remove grout from, but some of these travertines are a little bit porous and it takes a little bit more scrubbing to remove, but not a huge deal. Just something that would have made my life a little bit easier if I would have thought ahead on sealing that. Uh, so it's just a lot of monkeying around, continually trying to wipe things out. Biggest thing is, is just try not to have too much water on that sponge with these pre-mixed grouts. Uh, water is basically the enemy of installing this stuff. If you have too much water, it wants to wash the joint out and you almost have to just apply more uh, grout and, and redo it. Okay, so that's the first wash. Let that sit. Um, let that dry for about 45 minutes and you can take a scrubby pad and scrub any excess off of this. So it just takes a little bit of time, but um, biggest key, making sure you don't have too much water on your sponge. You do that, you're gonna wash out the joint and then you have to pack it again. So my hope is that you got something out of this today with your own project. If you have any questions, please leave some comments below. Please subscribe. And my goal is to simplify bathroom remodeling so that you can plan, learn, and build your own bathroom.